Let's take a look at some non-destructive edits that are available within Photoshop. I have my layer 1 layer selected in my layers panel. Remember we merged all of our layers into a new layer with our rasterized image where it's been merged into one. And we're going to apply some effects to this that will again be non-destructive. On my window menu at the top, I'm going to click on that. I'm going to select actions to open the actions panel. The actions panel are a variety of macros that have been created for you and you can actually find additional ones on the internet at a variety of places including the Adobe Exchange. These are the default actions available and by simply having your layers selected and then clicking or selecting one of these actions you can hit the play button here at the bottom of the panel and it will apply that action for you. So what's, what they've done is they've actually recorded a series of steps that when done in a certain order will actually make these effects. And you can actually save your own actions or create your own actions by using this panel and using the begin recording option and then stopping it and saving your recording. But Photoshop has quite a few available by default and we're going to open up an additional library. These are the default actions. I'm going to go ahead and collapse that folder. I'm going to click on the actions menu panel and I'm going to select image effects from the bottom of that pop-up menu. Under image effects you see we have a variety of actions and again these are non-destructive and we'll, we'll just take a look at a couple of them. Again I have layer 1 selected. The layer that's selected is where this action will be applied and you'll see if I click the expand button in front of H photo these are all the steps that Photoshop is going to apply automatically for me. I'm going to go ahead and collapse that. I have H photo selected. I've got layer 1 selected and I'm going to click the play button. And this will show you another reason why we wanted to merge our layers into a new separate layer because if I wanted to apply this action it wouldn't work if I applied it to the hue saturation layer. It would only work on that layer and it wouldn't apply it to the entire image. So merging them into a separate layer allows me to apply these actions. Here I've played the H photo action and you'll see that it created a new layer called layer 1 copy. Again if I click my visibility icon you'll see there's my original and then if I click the layer 1 copy visibility icon again you'll see this is what the action has done to it. So it kind of looks like an old 1950s Polaroid and it kind of works for this image with the style of it. I can delete this layer at the bottom of my layers panel when I have the layer selected again my icons become active at the bottom I can click on the trash can and I can delete this layer. I'm going to click yes and let's try another one. You've got blizzard, you've got light rain, you've got sepia toning. So if you actually want to turn your image to a grayscale, they have an automated feature here called sepia toning grayscale and they have another one right, right below it. We'll take a look at both of them. So again I've got layer 1 selected, I've highlighted sepia toning grayscale, I'm going to hit the play button and you'll see that it's actually changed my image into a grayscale black and white photo. I'm going to click on layer 1 again. I'm going to hide the visibility icon on layer 1 copy. And now I'm going to choose the next sepia toning called sepia toning layer. And I'm going to click the play button. You'll see this one actually took two layers to create. It added a hue saturation layer. You'll notice this little arrow for the hue saturation. Instead of creating a mask per se like we did where we only went over a certain portion of the image, when they applied the hue saturation in this instance, they created what's called a clipping mask. So that little arrow indicates that it's only applying to the picture directly below it, which is our new layer 2 that it created when it was applying the sepia toning layer command. So let me turn on layer 1 copy here at the top of our stacking order. And you can see when we just applied the grayscale sepia toning, we've got it's clearly just grayscale. And when we apply the one sepia toning layer, you can see it's got a little bit more undertones in it and it's not completely grayscale. It looks like it's got a little bit of hue saturation in it. Again, if we don't want to use these, we can just select the layers and delete them. You can also, on the history panel, which is right next to actions, you'll see it's keeping track of things that we've worked on and it's been taking snapshots for us and you can undo things by going back up the history panel. But again when we're working with actions as you can see sepia toning layer when I expand that arrow it's done four different steps. Sepia toning grayscale, 
applied four steps. So that's quite a few different steps that actually have gone through into our history panel. So it'd probably be easier just to delete the layers. But this is one method that you can apply, again, non-destructive edits and very easily convert your image to a grayscale form. So I encourage you to take advantage of this and take a look at the different actions that are available under image effects. And again, if we go to our panel menu for actions, you'll see that there's some other categories available that you can explore as well.